Jim. I know you wanted to jump in when uh, exactly. Renault, 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 Renault. But just to take it forward one tiny notch, of course. And that is that uh, President Macron yesterday had a conversation with Mohammed bin Salman in Saudi Arabia, and one of the topics of their conversation was Afghanistan. Um, so uh, we don't know what they talked about. The Elysee is not saying. But in any case, that conversation about Afghanistan has, has, has taken place and, and perhaps may be leading to something further on, opening of schools and who knows what. Secondly, I just wanted to take objection to your characterization of betrayal, uh, the U.S. betrayal of Afghanistan. If it was a betrayal, it was a betrayal that was a very costly one. The U.S. paid dearly for that betrayal, a trillion dollars and 6,000 <laughs> lives. And uh, so it wasn't a betrayal. It was a failure. Yes, and the general said that as much in, in a very humble way. I mean, they were totally humiliated uh, in front of the Congress, uh, admitting that, uh, you know, the Taliban were now in power, the enemy was now in power in Kabul. It was a failure. But betrayal, I don't go that far. I think, uh, I think it was a betrayal because as in Vietnam, in Vietnam, in, uh, in the, the Paris Accord, uh, America said to the South Vietnamese, we'll help you to fight, stand for democracy, stand for your values, and we will, we'll, we'll, we're leaving Vietnam, where we wanted to replace the French in 55, we, stand, we started, you know, and, but now we will help you. And then suddenly, it was due to the Congress, I will not come back to that, but they were dropped, and then you had the good people, and you had the Red Khmers, and all what happened in Indochina. In Afghanistan, my point is that the United States was not compelled to do this nation building. Then won the first war, which was having a Northern Alliance in Kabul, and, and they, have, they had killed, I was there, they had killed all this Arab internationalist jihadists that were in Afghanistan and uh, dismantled all uh, the cells and so on. They chose, they chose this nation building in the Bonn conference. They chose it. Uh, and, and it was the, this ideology, okay? So you want to do it, I mean, success. And they said, to the youth of Afghanistan, built information, built new medias. They said to the girls, I was there. I, I listened to what the Americans told them. I listened to what Khalil Zal told them. I listened to, to what the, the, the American radio in Afghanistan was saying. He said, build your new, uh, we will help you build your new society and so on. And they had done that. And a lot of youth in Afghanistan believed in these American values. They believed deeply. And these people have been dropped. Why? Because, yes, they had built an army of 300,000 uh, soldiers. But when you say, I mean, morale in the army, demoralization is very important. When you, and that was a major mistake of Biden, and his generals were against it. You, are, you were right. When you say, we are going to drop a base, which is very easy to keep, Bagram, and you, you give a message to your ally, this army that they, they, they formed, okay, it's finished. We are. And, and by the way, if you think that negotiating with the Taliban, without inviting in Doha, uh, the Afghan uh, government and the Afghan army is not a betrayal. I don't know. That I was, don't that see was, any that other was Mr. word Trump's, for that. that. That was Mr. Trump's decision. That was not Mr. Biden's decision. This is Trump's decision. But, right, and, exactly. And, then, so, uh, and, and Biden followed this policy. Yeah. It's, a, it, it's a betrayal. Maybe America... Uh, uh, lost a lot of money in Afghanistan, sure, like it lost a lot of money in Mesopotamia and a lot of money in, in Indochina before 75. True. But if you tell me that negotiating uh, 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 the future of the country without inviting the government that you put in place 
uh, in the Bonn conference is not a betrayal. I don't see well, any that, word for that. That was the previous administration, but let me just, and I'm not defending it, I'm not from the administration, so I can't speak for the administration, but let me just say that now, okay, the Americans have left. So now the field is open. So now let's just see who comes in to improve a lot of women, to educate uh, the children of Afghanistan. Right, and I, to, I think the to point- To human rights. The, who, who's gonna come in and fill the gap? Absolutely, I think the point you're raising is clear. This was a, a, a process that was initiated by Donald Trump, but it, it was seen through by, by Joe Biden. And I think in both cases, one could argue both decisions were primarily rooted in US domestic political uh, motivations. I, I, I think-, think isolation, I isolation does not, does not help. Right. And, uh, and we have an, American uh, embassy should have been kept open. You have negotiated. America has given uh, Afghanistan to the Taliban. But why close the embassy? I mean, okay, maybe Afghanistan needs a government, any government, because we must not, no conservative forgot, the, no conservative, they are right, they hate political dictatorship. And Taliban is a political dictatorship. Right. But there is worse, we have to remember that there is something worse than political dictatorship, it's anarchy. Right. And there is something worse than anarchy, which is civil war. Now, in Afghanistan, we're between dictatorship and anarchy. A little bit of both. Please, let no go back to civil war. So it's why right. we have to be there in Afghanistan to have, uh, and to try to do the best so that a civil war does right. not resume in Afghanistan. Okay.